I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the Drive Home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and today I'm lucky enough to be joined by Susan Harrington. Susan is a master when it comes to all things trademarks and protecting your brand and doing all of those wonderful things. But without further ado, what I will do is I will share the screen and uh, we will pop Susan up on the screen. Hello, Susan. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, great to be with you and have a chat with you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, really nice to catch up with you and, and hear all about what you do. Um, how long have you been involved with trademarking? Uh, ooh. <laughs> Dare I say, um, let's say 25 years plus. <laughs> wow, wow. So you sort of know a thing or two about trademarking and, and brands and, and what to do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been dealing with, um, I, when I worked in large law firms, mostly large businesses, companies, um, uh, overseas and Australian, uh, uh, basically setting up with them and dealing with the trademarks office, dealing with lawyers. And so I've got a good network of people, lawyers mostly, that um, help me overseas when my clients are going over there. So yeah, so between us all, we're, we've got it covered, I think. <laughs> and, and I believe you cover both um, Australia nationally and internationally, which is great for everybody that needs trademarks. Yeah, I, I, I really get excited for small business owners that um, come back to me and say, I'm ready to go overseas. You know, the business is expanding and, you know, I'm really excited. We're going to go to New Zealand or we're going to China or America, wherever it is. Yeah. And they say, you know, can you help me with that? So, you know, I think it's good. It's good. It's a good news thing when you have small business, you know, basically growing yeah. like that. Oh, no, absolutely. And it's really interesting because I think how long ago did we meet? It would have been about 10 years ago when we yeah. first made inquiries yeah, probably, about trademarks. Yeah, yeah about eight because I've been yeah. in business nine. So that's it. Yeah. 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 Um, and <laughs> I know it doesn't stand still for anybody. Here we are, sort of just after Christmas, and we're heading into Easter, and the Easter eggs are out. The bunnies are sort of jumping off the shelves. Don't tell so. me about it. <laughs> <laughs> all the kids want their treats, all the rest of it. So uh, yeah. yeah, but I think one of the most interesting things is, um, and you've shared this before, and it's how many businesses trademark their brands. I think what was it about twenty percent? Uh, sorry, seventy percent that. Um, don't, don't think that do. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think, Rachel, that's a combination of things. Um, it's uh, about um, small business owners just getting excited about what they do and yeah. not, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. Uh, mm. But there's a lot they don't know. Like me, when I started my business, there was sure you know, being an employee for so long, you don't think of all the things that are associated with having a business so they're so focused on that they rely on their their you know team as in their accountants their lawyers their business advisors and coaches they rely on them to tell them what they don't know yes. so if those if those external people don't know about trademarks then they're not going to tell the business owner yeah. so um, i've been trying to educate those people um, as well as the business owners, um, to think about trademarks before you go too far down the track. Yeah, because I think it's a really valid point that you make because a lot of businesses, you think, um, let's just get get all excited, as you say, and let's start the business, we'll put the name out there, we'll make it happen. Um, mm. I think you've got a bit of a war story about one of your clients that, you know, had had this business for close to a decade and yeah. then they get a cease and desist letter, yeah. which... Yeah you know, is not always fun to get, but um, obviously people, <laughs> you know. Well, um, I, I think that comes back to um, sometimes when I get people that come to me with a cease and desist letter, um, 
they think, well, uh, I've got a business name registration. You know, I own the name. Why are they, you know, why are they sending me this letter? But the big mistake that small business owners make is thinking that having that business name registration means they own that name. Yes. And in fact, somebody else has trademarked it and they're the ones with the with the legal rights to use yes. that mark. And yeah. and I think the other thing people don't understand is when they, a lot of them have come to me and said, look, don't you bother doing the research because I've done it and there's nothing on the register that's a problem. So they don't yeah. understand trademark law in that when you have a trademark registra registration, your rights are quite broad. So it's not only the exact name, it's anything that sounds similar or anything yes. basically that could confuse the marketplace. And that's a lot of, uh, and, you know, and it could not, like that um, uh, lady that you were talking about, she was a copywriter, but the people that came Sorry, you just broke up there, Suzanne. You just oh, broke up there. Sorry? Can you just repeat what you said? The screen just broke no. up there on that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. It's all good. Yeah. If um, you can just repeat what you said, that'd be great. Yes. So that lady that you were talking about was a copywriter. Yeah. And the, the people that she got the cease and desist letter were publishers. So it's oh. it's a related business. Yes. So that's what um, a lot of people don't understand, that it's broader than what yes. just what they're doing. Yeah. And you've got not only 20 odd years experience in what you're doing, but you're number one um, bestseller on the Amazon list of books for trademarking. Tell me about that and, um, you know, what the what it's like in regards to being a number one bestselling author on Amazon. Um, and I think we've just lost the screen. Sorry for the technicality problems that we're having here, people. If you can still see us on the screen, um, Susan will be coming back onto the screen very shortly. But um, it just seems as though she's coming, fading in and out. So she'll be back with us. Um, yeah, just in regards to the trademarking and so forth, I've known Susan for probably about, as she said, about eight years. And when I first started in the business, it was important for me to want to be able to protect the brand because what we do, we feel is different to what other agents do in the workplace. Um, so if you want to be able to market yourself and put your name out there, it's really important to get that mix right. And I guess that's why I sought the services, um, you know, sought out the services of Suzanne, because she really knows what she's talking about when it comes to the trademarking. You only have to spend um, a couple of minutes on the phone with her and you, you know that she's got your back and she's able to, you know, do what she needs to do in regards to, um, the trademarking and so forth. Uh, if you can hear us, Suzanne, you, you're not coming up on the screen at the moment, so you might be best to um, go out and come back in if that's um, what you're having from your own. But in regards to the real estate business that I have, oh, here she is. She's back again. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Wonderful technology. I was just telling the story of um, before we segue back to the Amazon book, um, how wonderful you are and, and in regards to when I met you that eight years ago and seeking out the services of somebody like yourself that has your back and you, you know you've got um, all of the details that we needed to be able to move comfortably forward with protecting our brand so back to you it's all yeah. about the, uh, <laughs> I want to hear about the Amazon book and your number one bestseller twice I believe um, yes. tell me a little bit about the book it's 10, 10 steps isn't it yeah well um, what happened was I actually went to a seminar on video production, you know, really, okay, at home. and yes. the uh, there was a woman there that was um, holding classes for writing books, you know, for authors, yes. and she was there at that um, conference, and she heard me, you know, people stand up and say what they do and tell them oh, people yeah. a little bit about it. And so I did that, yeah. and she came up to me and said, "You have to write a book because so many people." particularly business people don't know the risks that yeah. that they're running by using names they haven't checked first off or registered. So yes. unlike all the other people in the class, I had never had a desire to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I thought, oh my God, I've got enough on my plate. But 
she convinced me and I did and you know and it was a it was a hard process because I thought what will I say yeah and so absolutely. she actually led me through um what I should do and we ended up coming to the point where the best way for me to get the message across was to aim for the small business person so it's not a yes. legal book in any way no. and just talk about the 10 most asked questions so yeah you know what is a trademark what is the difference between the tm symbol and the r symbol and when do i use it and you know i'm a small business do i really need to do it so yes. these these 10 questions i get asked all the time so i answered those in the book and then i gave a war story yes on each question um yeah. so it was a, it's a simple book it's not mm. you know overly long it probably take people about an hour to read mm. so it was really aimed at making things simple for mm. business owners to know what risks they need to think about mm. and I also think went to amazon twice i was i was totally amazed and excited and and all those yeah. things yeah, you should be really thrilled and proud of yourself. It's good to see fellow Australian women doing well in the um, the field that you are. And you've obviously put the hard yarns in to get to the top of the ranking. So well done you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially if I, I know, uh, you know, you talk about sliding doors. Now, yes. if I had stayed in corporate, I would never have written that book. No, no, it's absolutely just, just not. It's just amazing how things just, you know, fall into place, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that's what it felt like when we got together in regards to the branding, because it was really important for me to protect what we had um, and the businesses. There's a lot of real estate businesses out there and to differentiate, di differentiate, you can't even say that word, differentiate yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. I need another yeah. coffee, people um, <laughs> that are listening. Yeah, no, um, just be between other agents and yourself. And it's really important to get, you know, something that's unique. And then once you have something that's unique which you've uh, helped us find um, you put that out to the marketplace confidently with this trademark that you've made and, and registered for us um, mm. maybe for the people listening uh, you had mentioned in regards to the difference between um, whether it's an R or a TM now I mean obviously I, I know the process because you've been through that with me but what is the difference for the people that are listening and, and what do they really need to know in that regard yeah, um, the process um, is eight months. Mm. So uh, the filing date is the critical date because um, that holds your position in the eight month process. Uh, but between international conventions and the time it takes for the, for the each mark to be yes. um, examined by uh, the trademarks office to make sure it qualifies, um, there are those sorts of things that need to go th be done in that eight month mm. process. So mm. it's it's examined to make sure it qualifies. Then it's um, advertised to make sure that any third party who has rights um, can oppose if they don't think you should have rights. So they've got to have good reasons. And yes. then um, if there's no opposition, it's registered. And mm. it's at that stage after that eight month process and you get a formal certificate of registration that you can use the R symbol, which is mm. the R in a circle. Now, um, before that process, during the application, or if you have uh, just using it and are thinking that you might file an application, that's when you can use the, just the TM. Mm. But it, it, it's, not, it's not giving you any rights. It's only no. once you've got that R symbol mm. um, that you've, you know, you've got it. Yeah, so, and it's so a, sorry. No, you go. I, I think it's important to actually use that sign, um, so your competitors know you're serious about the rights you hold in that brand. That's so right. you've gone through the process, you paid the fees. You might as well, you know, let people know that this is mine. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of an exciting thing. I mean, I know for us, it, it seemed forever that the time that it <laughs> took, and but it wasn't you holding it up. It was just the process that has to go through. And, um, you know, once you receive that certificate to say that that's your name and that's what you've done, um, we we were very happy to to get that in regards to the Live Love um, project that we've had on the, the books. And it works quite well with the real estate because we, we have all of the different brands 
that um, are associated with that and the different colours and we're very happy with the end product. So we appreciate what you did there. Thank you. No, I, I think, you know, there, there's a, a couple of things that, that led to you being successful. Um, and I think a lot of small businesses owners, when they start a business, they're inclined to use a descriptive name or um, something that's not unique to their industry. Yes. Um, and so I, I say all the time, think like the big guys. You know, think of brands like Apple or Billabong, any of those, Revlon, any of those yes. big names that don't actually say a word or indicate what the product or service is. Yes. So yeah. you can have Apple, and in the beginning they would have said Apple computers or Apple, you know, earphones or whatever it was. Um, but their reputation got such that they could just put Apple and people knew what they did. The same with Billabong, same with Revlon. They don't have to have cosmetics or clothing because people know that brand is what that is. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's what you should be aiming for, a brand that stands alone and doesn't describe anything about what you're doing. And that really goes against what small business owners come to me and, and they try to do. I know because, I mean, my original brand was my company and my name and we've lost you again, Susan, if you, um, if you want to flick back out and come back in, if you can hear us. I'm sorry about this technical glitch here today, people. I do appreciate your patience and hanging on the line here. But for with our process, it was rather interesting and it was lengthy, but it was worthwhile because it protected not only um, what I was doing personally, but also what we're doing on the bigger scale with the Live Love um, project that we have. So now we have the rights to that and we're able to access that across Australia, which is fantastic. And we've got the option to franchise the business. So that's something that we're excited about. And um, if anybody needs any help in regards to the trademarking process or real estate questions that are on the line now and would like those questions answered, we are more than happy to help you in that regard. So you can have your questions answered. Um, um, I guess with the book with Suzanne and what she's written is fantastic resource for you. So you're able to, you know, get that on Amazon at any time. I will put the links up, um, you know, below so that we can see that. But um, I'm sorry, we're still having technical issues with Suzanne. She's uh, still not back with us. If she can hear us, um, she will be going out and going back into the system. Must be everybody's on the internet or everybody's <laughs> here again. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. It's something in the air. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're, we're sort of taking our time and, um, you know, going through the process. But I was just sort of saying the differentiation between the, the personal brand, Rachel Goldsworthy, and the Live Love brand that we have, which is the bigger yes. picture and the mm. opportunity to franchise and those sorts of things. And I, I suppose people think that their own personal name is is their own, but even though you, you named that, your parents named you that, it doesn't mean you own the name, I suppose, out in the open. Yeah. So. And, and you'll notice that all the celebrities are very, yeah. um, um, they're gung-ho, <laughs> some of them, you know, like the Kardashians, they're everything, they they want to protect in the name of in their names so that they That's can right. productize and sell things under their name but um i think small business don't really think of that they they're um just more focused on getting started and not really looking at the the bigger picture and, yeah. and I, I think that's what i help people do look at the bigger picture and the what can happen as you get bigger so yeah it's, uh, it, the more unique your name is, the more likely you're to get exclusive rights, not only in Australia, but say that you want to go to New Zealand or, or somewhere else, then the more unique it is, the less likely there'll be problems overseas. Yeah, so absolutely. that helps with the longer term um, you know, um, risks, lower, lowering those. And that's what it's all about. You don't, You want that peace of mind to be able to grow your business um, without worrying and looking over your shoulder or out of the blue, 
getting getting yes. one of those letters. You know, cease and desist letters. Yeah, but I think that again comes back to you know the right advice is what you were talking about before. Because if you don't get the the right advice and you don't do the the right research, then obviously other people can come in from the side, take that name from under you. And sometimes, you know, the advertising and the application, sometimes people don't even realise that they're happening behind the scenes and then all of a sudden they, they get taken out of um, the picture because their name belongs to somebody else and not theirs anymore. Yes. And, and that, that uh, you know, when people say, oh, dear, you know, only small, like you don't need to worry about me, I'm, I'm fine. I say it's actually more devastating for it because I've seen it, it's more devastating for a small business to have that cease and desist letter yeah. than a larger company because That's they've right. got the funds, they just move on. Whereas yeah. the the people that have got those letters and and um, you know they've they've spent you know can imagine that woman that had spent years in that business, how much for a website, how much for advertising, all the yeah. networking, uh, there is just so much you put into your business. Uh, yeah, when you're a small business, and if you get into a dispute, dispute you're talking about a minimum of fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's just so, so powerful small. to have that that trademark because you, you just go straight back at them. Sorry, no, That's we it. own the trademark, and and you're out of the picture, and this is ours. And yes, you, you move forward with clarity. Whereas there's a lot of confusion the other way, and I think that. Um, you know, it's it's not a comforting point. And as you say, like there's a lot of goodwill in a business. And I've been in the real estate industry for about 20 years. And, you know, I, I can only imagine if I woke up one morning and then somebody had my brand name and I had to start all over again because how do you get that time back? You just, it's not recoverable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in, a, in a way, it's a rebrand, but right from scratch. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and sure, people will know the person, but it's not going to be the same. It's not going to have the power yeah. that that brand had out in the, you know, workplace or out in the um, consumer world. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if people wanted to get started on on doing a trademark, what's the, I mean, I know the process with, with us, you took us through, um, you know, the application process and we sat together um, or did some teleconferences and had some thoughts around that what's the best way for somebody if they're thinking about okay well I've got this brand don't know whether or whether it's worth branding or whether what what we should do how do they get in touch with you and how do they get the process started Suzanne the um well they can send me um uh, contact information through my website um and we can go through it that way but I think in the beginning what they need to think of for their brand is is it unique it doesn't yeah. describe what they do where they are um yeah nothing like that so that when we do the research because that's the first stage we do the yeah. research tell them whether the brand is able to be registered um the trademark system is um under classifications so you're under real estate you know there's and there's 45 classes so you've got to pick the right classes but really importantly you've got to pick the right wording within the class because that can be that's right it can, it can have consequences down the down the line if you don't have the right coverage yes um yes. so we tell them those sorts of things there's a, a quicker process uh, it still takes like eight months but there's a process where you can go through and find out within about two weeks whether the trademarks office will have any problems. Um, so a lot of small businesses want to know then rather than five months down the track. Yeah. So yeah. we do that and then we let them know the, the fees for each of the options and then the stage two is where we actually file that application and we, we basically run with it and just keep you in the loop of what we're doing with the trademarks office or if we're overseas the overseas uh, lawyers or the overseas uh, trademarks office so you basically get on with what you're doing and you know we just keep you in the loop and you go oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's what i liked about it we, to and forget. we had that first conversation and you said do this do that make this happen make that happen and then you just took the reins and we walked away and said okay we'll see you in eight months and yes. that was pretty much 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter Fay. It all it all came together lovely and um it was it was done and dusted and we're very happy yeah. with the end result. We're just actually getting we just bought a new um new vehicle, so we're just changing those over with the signage as well. So that'll be kind of Excellent. exciting having those on the road and um yeah, yeah, just something yeah, a little bit uh, different. So if somebody um, was sort of had a question as well, can they contact you? Is there a particular website that we can send them to? Or Yeah, our website is um, www.pinnacletms.com.au. Um, or they could go on to Amazon because this is my yep. book. I'll give you yeah, a... Yeah, just pop that yeah. up on the screen there. Here we yep. go. So you can go on to Amazon and... You know, there's those 10 questions there um, and it's only $3.99, so it's not going to break the bank. And um, have a read of that and that will actually um, give you some clarity on information about trademarks that you might not know, not likely to know. So yeah. um, then you come to me and you've sort of got an idea of that background, so that that's a good idea. Um, but basically, you know, fill in the form on the website, I'll get back to you and give you the information and we'll go from there. And, you know, sometimes I do have to say to clients, you can't go forward with that mark. That's it. Okay. So the sooner they come and, you know, we talk about the brand, the better, rather yeah. than investing, you know, six months worth of time for me to turn around and say, you need to start again. Yeah, that's what I loved about the process for what we did too. You did that research, you did that due diligence because as much as uh, I'm a business person, entrepreneur, I've been in legal background and um, finance background, those sorts of things, and it's just there's so much to know and there's so much we don't know even though we do know a lot and it's best to go to the people that know because that's what you do every day it's kind of like real estate if somebody came to me and Definitely. said oh my, my mother's aunt's sister's brother's cousin's <laughs> johnny um is going to help me sell the house what do you think i mean what what can you say to somebody you can't <laughs> say well that's a great idea unless they do have real estate experience you know it's the same thing with the trademarks you know you yeah. you've had that experience you've got that legal background you've been doing it for a long time and you know what boxes to tick and what things to say and and even down to what you're talking about before with the um you know is it unique to the industry does it um describe your business or what you do or the geogra geographic ticks that it has it's just um fascinating that all of those things mixed together with a bunch of other things that you do cover off on actually make a difference as to whether you get that trademark or not. Yeah. And, and I think that's um, when I was saying that, Some so somebody might say, uh, I want to do Sydney computers. Yes. Yeah. Well, what about if you go to Perth? What about if you go to New Zealand? It's restricting where where your you know, business can be. And, and then it's hard to franchise on that sort of sort of name. That's right, yeah. And have you had any really good trademarks that you loved doing or that had a really good result that you wanted to share for the people listening? Um, I have a client that I'm so proud of. Um, she has uh, baby skin products and the brand is Lovekins, L-O-V-E-K-I-N-S. And it's she has all these beautiful products for your baby and she's now expanding into Lovekin's woman wow. so she's gone overseas and you know she's doing so well um yeah. she's one of those people that you go oh an awesome businesswoman um, yeah so um i don't knowledgeable about her products as you know people are but they are australian and of course when she's going into china and there's all sorts of pit bulls there, but she's just ploughing through it, and she's just an amazing woman. So, yeah, yeah. love can does see it doesn't tell you anything about that name. No, no, it doesn't, does it? It's good. Yeah, uh, there's there's another one that another amazing um, story of a client. She got breast cancer, and mm. she was looking around for um, bras to wear and couldn't find any that that were you know sexy and because she was only in yes. her 30s 
Uh, yeah, so yeah. she created her own range of bras for women with breast cancer and wow. uh, which we trademarked sexy survivors. Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. I, I just, you know, these women have just you know, amazing. I, I, I'm, I'm in awe of them. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's wonderful for you to be able to work with them and have such um, great minds that think alike and all working together for a common cause. And, um, yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's fascinating, the trademark. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with the listeners today in regards to trademarking or things that they may need to know before they get started? Uh, I think uh, a misconception is that it's going to cost them, you know, five thousand dollars to to do it. It doesn't, um, mm. and, you know, unless you're you've got a huge range of products because you pay per class. But mm. you know, for the research you're talking about under a thousand dollars, now that could mm. save you going down the yeah. track and getting sued. That's and right. Then, and then if you're only going one class for um, the application part it's about 1400 over that yeah. eight months period that includes yeah. everything so at the end of the day you might have spent you know two and a half thousand for a 10-year registration where you don't pay anything more no no that's it and then um it, because that's so simple with the other side of it sometimes people who have their brands are a bit cheeky and want to put the TM up before anything sort of happened, um, which is fine, but they put the R up before anything has been registered and that's a big no-no, yes. isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it is. I've had a couple of clients come to me and they've already put that up. Um, yes. And I said, there's actually a six-figure fine for... Yeah. Uh, because yeah. you're misleading the public. And that's right. It's not allowed yeah. to do that. No, exactly, exactly. And it's so important, the same thing in real estate, you know, misleading deceptive behaviour. It's very important that everybody stays transparent and, and tell people <laughs> exactly what's going on with where they're at. So um, I guess it just comes back to... Sorry, can I just say that probably you in your uh, career and starting your business as well and me within about six months, I thought I can't do it all. I don't want to learn bookkeeping. I don't want to learn how to do this. I think yeah. learning to delegate is one of the biggest lessons I learned yeah. in business. You know, yeah. surround yourself with people who know what they're doing and are on your side and you just focus on what you're good at. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And um, I learned that lesson a little bit late in life too, but I think it's so <laughs> valuable. <laughs> it's because um, well, I, I don't know why we want to do everything ourselves and make sure that it's right and do whatever. Yeah. But there's a lot of people around us that can do things so much better than what we can sometimes. And as you say, you know, bookkeeping or whatever it might be. Um, and, and I've got a really good team around me as well, and they're fantastic. And we do outsource some of our work um, across the other the side of the world together with locally so you know it's it's all about finding the right places for the right um, medium and the, and then working mm. with that so um, mm. but yeah no I think I think it's been really valuable today and the people listening would be um, quite quite excited about what's been put here I think we've covered off on the branding and the the, the costs involved the cease and desist and the different types of things um, I really appreciate your time, Suzanne. It's um, been a pleasure talking to you. And yeah. I will put the links up down at the bottom of the comments if anybody has any questions for Suzanne. Yeah. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to answer them. And likewise, yes. I would be more than happy to answer any questions in regards to real estate or, or something yes. that we can refer to, Suzanne, in regards to trademarking for your businesses. So Thank you for, right. for the invitation to chat and, you know, spread the educational word about trademarking. It's, you know... It's a great opportunity for me. Thanks. So I really appreciate it, Rachel. No, you're most welcome. That's what it's all about, I think, as you said before, sort of helping one another in our own businesses do what we do best, but helping those that do best in their job as well. And um, mm. together with the, the leverage of one another, we help one another to get there in the end. And I think that's really important and there should be more of that in business and also with, with life in general because life can be challenging at times and that's yeah. what friends and family are for and that's what good mm. you know business colleagues are for too to be able to lean on in the yeah. tough times when we 
going to have to work out what the best way forward is. So thank you for doing mm. that, Suzanne. I appreciate everybody being on the line today. And we will share this on our podcast, The Drive Home to Hawkesbury. And we'll also share it out on our Facebook page and Instagram pages. And I'm sure Susan will share it out on her pages and I'll put those links up online. So everybody's got thank that. You. If anybody's interested in putting up a trademark, getting one set up, um, you know, marketing their brand the right way and um, starting it perfectly, I think would be the best way we see it. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you everyone for being online and we'll catch up with everybody on the next episode. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.